Firecrawl is an amazing web scraping tool allowing you to scrape single or even multiple web pages into your Bubble app. So in this Bubble tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how to use their Crawl feature, which gives you the ability to provide one page and then for it to go out and crawl the rest of the site or any, follow any links it can find, find the site map, use that to guide its crawling through the site. But effectively, it allows you to take one URL and then take a load of additional content straight from a website. But before I dive into that, if you're watching this video, it's because you've got a business idea and you're trying to build it with no code. And if you want to accelerate that process, then click the link down in the description and head over to our website, planetnocode.com. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the cruel endpoint here, taking a single URL, getting additional URLs and scraping that data. Um, so to do that, uh, we need to go into our bubble app and go into the API connector. And you can see other uh, services that I've done demos on, Claude, Eleven Labs, Carbon, a demo of that is coming soon. Really powerful AI tool uh, for vectorizing chunking data. But for now, we're just looking at Firecrawl. So I've gone ahead and added in a new, uh, another API, I've named it Firecrawl, I've said private key in header, I've said authorization, and then I've written bearer space and put my private key uh, in, or my API key uh, in that space there, and I've just blurred it out to save myself having to refresh it. Um, so we then go ahead and we add in a call, and so now let's dive into the documentation. Uh, so to use the cruel endpoint, we have to take uh, the URL from here and we can see that it is a post. So change this to post and we'll say a uh, cruel website action. Uh, so I'm changing it to action so that it can be uh, like a node in a workflow rather than just a data source because I want to say click a button and run this workflow. Uh, let's go back to the documentation uh, and you can see this is where I've got how to lay out the authentication. It goes in the header, authorization, bearer, token. Uh, we also have this header content type application JSON. As of a few months ago, that is now the default unless you specify a different value with the bubble API connector. So we no longer have to specify that. Uh, now I'm going to paste into here, um, paste into here a link. Uh, and then uh, just so that we can uh, limit our spend. I'm going to limit the number of pages it, pages it returns to three. Um, but you can see you get all of these additional criteria uh, that you can um, specify. Uh, and you can also, you, you can use this to basically just return a list of URLs, but you can also use it to return a list of URLs and the pages expressed as markdown. So useful if you want to be putting this into an AI prompt. You can basically take a, you know, take a small website and you can put that into uh, an AI prompt as data. Um, but also, uh, we've got an upcoming video with Carbon. Carbon actually has its own web scraping tool, uh, but you could use it in a similar way. But rather than inserting it into the prompt, you use a, uh, a chunk to vectorize database uh, to extract the right, just the right data, therefore reducing down your prompt size, uh, and then putting that into the, uh, the AI, the LLM prompt that you're using. Um, so this is the bare minimal of what I need and I'm selecting everything inside of the quote marks here. I'm gonna copy that, go back into my bubble app and paste it in here. I'm gonna make this dynamic. So I'm uh, highlighting the speech marks because I'm gonna make it JSON safe and JSON safe puts the speech marks back in place. Uh, so I'll just call this URL. You could of course have a larger cruel limit. So let's put the uh, speech marks back in place, paste in uh, BBC. Now, we do have to consider this, uh, web crawling, uh, web scraping uh, is not 100% reliable. That's because many websites put uh, defenses in place to stop you scraping their content. I mean, there's a whole legal battle about open AI and effectively scraping the whole web, including many paid journalistic sources. Uh, so if this doesn't work, that's probably the reason. So let's uh, initialize the call. It's also a heads up that in my experience, uh, a web scraper will may work one day and may not work another day. So it, it is really worth considering um, how you handle errors with it. But it looks like uh, something is happening. Good, okay, this has worked, there are no errors. We get back a job ID and that's all we get back. 
And that's simply because unlike, say, uh, scraping content from one web page, this is a job which may take longer than is reasonable to expect for a uh, for like the API connector to wait. So we get a job ID and we then need to check this for the status. So I'm gonna copy the job ID and click save. That's good, this has worked. It's trained Bubble what to expect from this particular uh, API um, uh, request. Uh, so let's dive back into the documentation uh, because we now need to move on to check job status. So once more, uh, we can copy this and we can see that this is now a get request. Uh, so let's go back into the Bubble API connector, paste it in. And I now just need to update the brackets into square brackets because that's what Bubble asks for, for a parameter, because we want to be able to dynamically insert in the right job ID. Uh, it's not gonna be private. We need to access to this for this in a workflow. Uh, so now let me paste in that job ID and I'll say get cruel status. Now I've only asked it to crawl three pages. I wouldn't be surprised if this is done. Yep, here we go. We get back three results and we get tons of data. I mean, just look at the scroll bar there of what it scraped uh, from BBC. Uh, and it sets so three pages, each with uh, content, each of content as markdown. Uh, we've got descriptions, we've got links on page. Uh, yeah, there's a wealth of data here. Um, so one final step is, uh, no, actually, before I go on to that, um, you, there is no web hook here, so you can't have your app notified when the cruel, the, uh, cruel status is complete. So what I would probably do is um, when, uh, in fact, let me build, let me build it out roughly. Uh, how I would do this. So let's get dive into our uh, bubble app and I've got a really simple bit of UI uh, designed here. And so I'm going to say add, and then I'm gonna search for fire crawl. And I see it listed here because this is exactly what I've called it uh, here. So if you see something different, it's either because you've named it slightly differently for your app, it may also be because you've not successfully initialized the calls. Uh, if you don't do that, they won't show up. Uh, so let's take our input. Uh, it's value. Uh, oh, and make it JSON safe. Okay. I'm now going to uh, set up a back end workflow because uh, I want to be able to check cruel status. And I'm doing a back-end workflow because I don't want my user to have to stay on the page and like it check every five seconds or something like that because if they leave the page, that work on-page workflows aren't going to run. A back-end workflow can run on the server regardless of what my user is doing. Um, so it doesn't need to be public. It just needs to have one uh, parameter which is job ID. And then, uh, let me just check in the API connector. Did I change this to, uh, I'm gonna change this to, I'm gonna change this to action. Uh, that just means that it's it's a, it's a node, it's a block on a workflow. I think it makes slightly more sense here. Um, so I'll say get status, no, what did I call it? Cruel status, there we go. And instead of the job ID here, I want to dynamically fill it with the job ID that goes in to the top level of the workflow. And then this is going to return, um, in fact, let's, let's just dive back into documentation. Uh, if the job is not complete, uh, response includes content within partial data. Uh, so uh, there, there we go. So in the response, string here, we need it to say uh, completed. So what I can do here is I can um, <clears throat> schedule the workflow back on itself. And I could say uh, current date time, um, I could just say like plus a minute. Pass in the same job ID, but only when Result of step one, status is, and I'm gonna double check because this needs to be an exact match. I'm gonna in fact copy across, completed, completed. 
No, 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 no. It doesn't need to be that. It is uh, is active. Is active. That means that it's running. Um, and in fact, I'll have a terminate workflow with the same condition. So this just means that it's going to loop upon itself. Now you you could probably put in additional checks here. Uh, because you just wouldn't want to create an infinite loop. Maybe you could have some sort of counter as it goes round. Yet yeah, just be aware, especially with the introduction of workload units, that when you loop a backend workflow on itself like this, that you have some sort of uh, protection in place to ensure that it doesn't infinitely happen because you introduce an error. Uh, for example, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe the, uh, this only when statement could cause issues. I'm, I'm kind of just putting the key principles in place here. But we say terminate it when it is active because the final thing we would want to do is uh, create a new thing. And I've probably got, yeah, I, I've got web scraping as a data type from a different tutorial. Um, but uh, I'm just going to pull out, uh, oh, actually, I get back a list of pages. Um, okay, so if I wanted to save the first page that came back, I could say uh, the result of here um, data first item title. Okay, so that's saving the title. But remember, I'm getting back three web uh, websites. So actually, I need another backend workflow, and I'll call this one save web page. Uh, and I'm just going to pass in title and content markdown. I like working with markdown. I think markdown is really helpful for uh, using with AIs because um, it does add a bit more structure to it. Uh, so here we have the create a new thing, uh, web scrape. And so I'd say title equals. So it's the title that I pass into this back end workflow. Uh, we'll add a new field, we'll call it Markdown. If you have issues displaying Markdown on your Bubble app, you can find plugins that convert it into HTML. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, type of data is text. Okay, so now uh, I schedule a backend workflow on a list. Uh, the thing that I'm listing through is uh, I have to go back to the API connector. So I get cruel status. Now this is just a little bit confusing. It's a little bit annoying when Bubble um, creates really long, you can't rename this. So I'm looking for get cruel status data because that's the list element. That is each website is one item in cruel status data. Uh, let's go back. Um, so uh, cruel status data, I think that is. And then the list, if this will tell me if it's matched up. Yeah, okay, because that's gone blue, I know that it's successfully, the, the data in and the type of data it's expecting have successfully matched. Uh, so now I can run my save web page, and I'm referring to, when I say this get cruel status data, I'm now saying, saying this is a single item in the list. So we'll go for the title, and we'll go for the markdown. And we'll just run this one straight away. Uh, and we'll leave the interval uh, clear. Okay, so uh, to go back, let's go back to uh, our page. Oh, cruel. Last thing to do is to schedule that initial check. So we say check cruel status. The job ID is the result of what comes out of our initial request to fire cruel. Uh, and then we'll say, uh, Current date time, and we you know you could add thirty seconds here. It really depends on how many pages you're scraping, uh, and you can use the playground in the file in just in your Firecall account to get an idea of what websites it scrapes really well, uh, and how long it takes to do that. So this is effectively saying, when this button is clicked, send it to the API that we set up. Uh, and take the job ID and pass that into a backend workflow that will run in 30 seconds. So then we go to uh, backend workflows and we'll check it. And if the, uh, I, if the status is active, that means it isn't completed. 
and so it will say well we'll run this workflow again in a minute's time and we'll terminate it that way we're not running this on incomplete data and then uh, for each uh, so when this goes through and it is completed we're saying for each item each web page that is returned we will run a uh, save and we're using a back-end workflow a schedule API workflow on list here because we want to be flexible with the number of pages if you knew that you were only going to be scraping three pages you could add in three create a new things here um, but uh, I like to make things dynamic flexible so we could run this on a hundred pages just be a little bit careful of the bill that you rack up with fire crawl I mean it's, it's really cheap it's really good value um, but do be aware of, of how easily and quickly that can escalate especially test to see if you're getting the right sort of data back before you run it on something a hundred or even a thousand times I mean we've been building an internal project at planet no code and uh, I've used fire crawl to scrape a thousand pages took about 10 minutes uh, they all got saved into the bubble database I then used a uh, um, open AI or Claude uh, to clean up the markdown and save it to just kind of make it reduce you know like a uh, extract the key data from this page and if you do want to extract data from each of these web pages I'd really recommend using Claude because Claude's uh, tool function allows you to extract structured data we've got videos on that in fact if you were to just search for Claude secret JSON mode uh, we've got a video on that so if you've got any questions please leave your comments down below and I'll see you in the next one